Hello everyone, my name is Chuck. You're watching Series Capades. This is a part of a series on plant identification. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to get notified when the rest of the series comes up. Or you could check out this playlist which should appear right in this corner. This is a very technical subject and depending on how you feel about science, this might be a very interesting topic or a very boring one. I am sorry, I can't change that. So let's get right to it. What's the difference between species and hybrid? This is actually one of the questions that I get a lot and I think it would be great to address this in a video. This is actually covered in taxonomy which is the science or the study of classifying things. And you would remember this from school so let me jog your memory a bit. To put things into perspective, let's have a look at the full hierarchy. So we would have division, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And for the most part, we are familiar with the last two. For instance, we are Homo sapiens, subspecies sapiens, so Homo sapiens sapiens. In this case, the genus would be Homo and the species would be sapiens. It can be tricky trying to remember all of those terms, the hierarchy, so like most things in science, we use mnemonics. Let's see now. Ah, do keep pots clean or family get sick? Again, do keep pots clean or family get sick? Division, kingdom, phylum class, order, family, genus, and species. Let's take one of my plants as an example. I literally just pulled this out a while ago. This is one of my Echeveria elegans clump. So yeah, it's a lovely specimen and it has lots of pups. But we're actually more interested in its taxonomy than its looks. So let's have a look at this. So this Echeveria elegans has a division of Eucaria kingdom of plantae or plants and phylum of angiospermi angiosperms which means that it flowers with no the seeds are contained in flowers rather than just being exposed i think yeah if i remember correctly gymnosperm means that the seeds are exposed an example of that would be conifers ginkgos stuff like that so they do not technically have flowers they just have the seeds exposed for class they are eudicoti and order Saxifragilis, family of Crassulaceae, genus of course Echeveria, and a species name of Elegans. So for the most part, we're just familiar with the last two of that hierarchy, the genus and the species. And that naming convention is called the binomial naming system, which is basically genus and species. It gets expanded into a trinomial when we talk about more detailed stuff such as subspecies, forms, what else are there? Varieties, cultivars. So those epithets are more specific parts, more detailed versions, something that would be able to pinpoint the plant even more. So the trinomial naming system. This is basically the stuff that we are interested in, the genus, the species, and whatever specific details we can gather from it. So again, as mentioned earlier, we have subspecies, varieties, cultivars, or cultivated varieties. We have forms, and I think that's pretty much it. I just have to make this note here, a uh, disclaimer if you will. There are so many different conventions, naming conventions in how uh, specific, the, the more specific epithets are being used, the subspecies, forms, and varieties. But in this video, I'm going with the standard set forth by the ICNCP or the International Code for Nomenclature for Cultivated Plants since most of what we're taking care of here are cultivated plants anyway. So according to ICNCP, below species, we would have subspecies, variety, or cultivar, then form. And according to them, subspecies would be used to denote locality. Say, if they were naturally found in a certain area, then you would denote it in the subspecies. While variety and forms are used to make the funnel even more specific, you might find a characteristic that's only limited to a small population, and maybe you would use variety or forms. I'm not clear on that either. But all I know is that form is usually so specific that it is used for monstros, crest, and variegated. So you would see forma variegata, forma monstrosa, and forma, what's crest? Cristata. And going back to cultivars and varieties, at least according to ICNCP, they are more or less the same hierarchy. So treat them as the same more or less. For those of us who are collectors of Echeveria, or well, pretty much any other succulent, 
genus, you would be familiar with the concept of cultivars because most of what we have are cultivars or cultivated varieties. So if you take, for instance, this Echeveria curls and this Echeveria dexpink, these are two different Echeveria cultivars. As the name suggests, the difference between cultivars and varieties is that cultivars are cultivated. They are not found naturally, for they are produced in cultivation. All right, now that we understand the taxonomy, the hierarchy, eight levels, then we could move on to the next topic would be hybrids. So hybrids are basically species that have been bred together, crossed together. This implies that there is some sort of sexual reproduction involved. And in terms of botany, hybrids are where you combine two different species, two different sets of genes to produce a new set of genes. There are three general types of hybrids. These are the intraspecific, the interspecific, and intergeneric hybrids. Intraspecific, as the name implies, intra or within, basically means that you're creating a hybrid within the same species. A very good example of this would be say if you have a bunch of different type of agavoides, pure agavoides, and fertilize them with each other, then you would be creating an intra-specific hybrid. All of them are agavoides, all of them are from the same species, no crossing over. The next type of hybrid which is very common in cultivation would be inter-specific hybrids. This is where you cross two plants from different species. A good example of that is this Echeveria orion. This is a cross between the Echeveria lilacina and the Echeveria pulidonis. Here's a few more examples of interspecific hybrids. Let's say a mule. It's a cross between... Uh, let me look it up. I keep forgetting. So a mule is a cross between a male donkey and a female horse. And both of them are from the Equus genus. And of course the liger, which is a male lion and a female tiger. Both of them are from the Panthera genus. And the third type of hybrid would be the intergeneric hybrid. This is basically where you mix species from different genera and you get a cross. One good example of that is this Pachyveria bea. Its parents are the Pachyphytum compactum and some sort of Echeveria, I'm not pretty sure either. With intergeneric hybrids, these ones tend to be within the same family. So if you recall, the hierarchy above genus would be family. So it would be species, genus, family. This is why you would never see crosses of let's say an Echeveria and a cactus. They're from entirely different families, man. The cacti are from the Cactaceae family, while the Echeveria are from the Crassulaceae family. Entirely different families, you won't be able to create hybrids from them. So going back to the original question of the difference between species and hybrids, a species denotes a pure strain, I guess, while hybrids is a result of a mix of those strains. There's a few things that we have to keep note when dealing with hybrids though. Most of the time, these hybrids tend to be sterile, which means that they could not be able to produce viable offspring. A stereotype that people place on hybrids is that they must be tougher. People seem to think that hybrids are tougher than other plants. While in practice, yes, people do use hybridization to make some species more tough than the regular ones. Because what you're essentially doing is to mask out some of the weaknesses by mixing it with other plants or other different species. So let's say you have a species that's very susceptible to fungus and if you mix it with another species which is very resistant to fungus, putting them together, you would have something that's stronger than this one, the original one that's uh, susceptible to fungus, but something that's weaker than this one. So in relative terms, you are improving this species overall but you're not doing any favors on this one. So to be pedantic about it, to be strict about it, hybrids is just basically a mix of genes. It does not necessarily mean being tougher or weaker, but unfortunately it's hard to change people's preconceptions about it. But since you have watched this video, now you know. So that's the difference between species and hybrids. It's pretty much a matter of purity and how you mix them together. So with that said, thank you for watching Seriscapedia. My name is Chuck. I'm doing my research, so you don't have to. I'll see you in the next part. Bye.